Now we have uh, Tony Wyatt uh, from the continent of Australia in Sacramento for Amy West, presenting on the NGF check, uh, which is a utility for, uh, well, I'll let him tell you about that, but it's uh, actually a, a nice user utility with a GUI and all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, here is Tony Wyatt. Sounds up. Is that better? Yeah, sounds better. <laughs> you may remember three years ago I stood here, well, not here, at the other end, so that's one lie already. And I introduced the uh, new generation file system, which I call NGFFS. Um, this year Brian asked me to give you a little update on it, telling you where it's got to in the last three years. And it, uh, hasn't advanced much since then. It's a fully fledged uh, mainstream file system these days. A few um, unfixed bugs, but nothing serious. The only uh, um, things which can be fixed easily. So, I'm going to tell you th this time not so much about the file system itself, but the ways of looking after it and repairing it and checking that it's all okay. So, here's a picture of a typical file system. And the, the yellow box in the middle is the file system program itself. You can see the disk over there on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side here, you've got all your calls coming in from users create a file, directory, delete something, read, write, list contents, all the usual things. They all appear as simple primitives and they're called by DOS. So when your program says open file, DOS turns that request into a whole series of, of primitives, calls the file system with the primitives and the file system does all the steps to open a file. As you can see, there's a cache on the far right-hand side of the box, and all the the um, so the files data is cached in there. So we try to minimise the number of accesses to the disk itself. So all reads come out of the cache, all writes go into the cache, and sometime later, at a somewhat lower priority, are written to disk. Now this, archi the, the architecture which I defined for the disk structures um, allows some expansion space and although we designed that architecture back in 2012, so far we haven't had to change the formats on the disk at all. No, wrong. I haven't had to f change the formats in a non-compatible manner. So w what's on the disk is still compatible with early versions from 2012. Now, when you design something like this, you, you've got to ask yourself, how the hell am I going to test it? Because as you know, a file system is a pretty important part of an operating system. It, it has to be demonstrably true and secure. So the first things you do is you look at the, the, the data that the file system contains. Here are the callers coming in on the left-hand side. It goes into a vector table, just like a library. In fact, the file system is just like a library with the vector functions and doing its work out of sight of the callers. You've got two lots of data. You've got your memory resident data here in the bottom of the box, which contains all the real-time uh, descriptors of every object that you're pl playing with on the disk. And you've got your, your disk resident data over there. And these two are not necessarily identical because of the cache. A change uh, due to a, a write request is going to update the cache and the memory resident parts Im immediately, but it won't necessarily be written to 
disc at that time. It might be written to disc in a couple of seconds when the file system has nothing else to do. So how do you debug this sort of thing? You've got to check that the memory resident data is correct. You've got to check the, that the disk resident data is correct. And bearing in mind that they're not necessarily the same. NGFS has uh, an awful lot of debugging information built into the debug version. It, so, that, so much so that the binary is twice the size of the um, of the real non-debug version. So one of the first things I did was to write this little um, developer's program called NGF Debug. This is certainly not going to be released to users because it, its um, output is completely unintelligible to normal people. It only accesses the memory resident data. It does not look at anything on the disk. It doesn't know what's on the disk. It, it only reads what's there in memory about to be or has been written to disk. It's the sort of thing that I use to ask it how much memory is used at the moment, um, show me all the objects that are current, I want to know all their status, uh, and, and that sort of thing. Or, or rather boring to uh, non-programmers. So how do you check what's on the disk? What's actually been written to the disk? Well, you have a different program, and I it has morphed over the years. It, it started out as a simple program like NGF Debug, which could read blocks from the disk and do a binary dump of them. But you soon get sick of reading binary dumps and trying to compare a 64-bit disk address in this block with the same 64-bit address in another block at the other end of the disk. So after a while, uh, I started to expand it and to cut a long story short, NGF check now can read the whole of the disk and can check it all for consistency. It does not look at what's in memory. The disk does not even have to be online or mounted uh, for NGF check to work. So if your disk is unmountable, then NGF check can still check it and maybe even find out why it's not working for you. Okay, it, it, it can fix errors if it finds them. Of course, it has to recognize errors and it has to know how to fix errors. So there is a big lookup table inside the program which tells it y using I if you find this sort of error in this sort of object, then this is a good way to fix it. It does not perform any checks or repairs on user data because user data is entirely transparent. It only looks at the, the uh, structures of the data on disk. Here is a, an example directory. We have the directory header here on the left-hand side with a number of slots for pointing to various objects within the directory. You can see slot one is pointing to a file up the top there Slot 3 is pointing to a soft link. Slot 4 is empty, so its content is 0. Slot 5 is pointing to a subdirectory, a, a daughter directory. Why are they always daughters? You never heard of son directories, do you? Um, each one of these objects uh, can have uh, other data uh, coming off from it. So, for instance, a file header, you've just got the one header block there which describes the file, tells uh, anybody reading it how much data it has, whether it has a comment. Uh, if, the, if it's a huge file with lots of um, allocations of data on the disks, then it may have extension file headers to describe all the rest of the data. So th the slot one here in the directory header is nothing but a 64-bit address that points to the file header block. The file header block, of course, has return pointers pointing back to the directory header. There's a lot of redundancy in it. And all these redundancies have to be checked to make sure that they're consistent.
Uh, here is an example of the lookup table um, in the repair part of the program. If, for instance, uh, you find that the header of a file or something else is not formed properly, it might have an invalid date or its checksum may be wrong or something like that, these are the actions that the uh, that NGF check would do if uh, for different sorts of of objects. So, for instance, if it's a subdirectory, it will say, look, we can't do anything with this, just to delete it. If it's a file, the same thing, comment, um, hard link, it will just delete it. If it's a directory extension, blah, 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 you can delete that extension from the directory and, and so on. A lot of these um, actions are pretty drastic. The full version has a GUI. The original version was only a CLI uh, command, and the version which is distributed with the um, pre-release A122 and a a X5000 machines, uh, the pre-release version of, of um, NGFS and of NGF check is a CLI only version. But it's equivalent. You can do the same things with, with the GUI and the CLI version. It, the GUI is just a little prettier. So here's the, the GUI window. You can select the volume, of course, up the top. You can select whether to repair it or not. Um, th this, is a th this is the result of scanning the SDK volume on, on one of my machines. Um, <coughs> it sh shows you the, the number of objects that it found in its scan um, and so on. The green boxes are uh, status reports. So it checks the signature block on the volume, that's the first green box. The two root blocks on the volume, there's one at each end of the d disk uh, allocation, disk surface. Uh, th 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 there's one for the bitmap and another for the journal contents. And then the last three are actual passes through the data on the disk. It needs three passes through the data because it has to check all the allocations of data to the various objects, the allocations within the bitmap, that is. Firstly, it checks that, that every bit of data referenced by file headers and directory headers and so on is actually marked as allocated in the bitmap. Then on the second pass, it goes through and checks that only one thing, no more than one reference to each bitmap um, content. And then thirdly, it goes through and makes sure that there are no blocks in the bitmap marked as used but not referenced by anything, which, which would then be lost to the system. So uh, I in this case, we have three greens at the end. If you were to find errors and, and click the repair box up the top, you'd have another box at the end to show the result of the repair process. So, if we can, I'll see if I can run this um, NGF check on Bill's machine here. <laughs> it ran all right the other day. <laughs> Thank you. You can run NGF check from CLI, of course, as I've said. You can also run it from, from the workbench, or you can... You can run it from the workbench, or you can run it from the um, icon by clicking on the icon and selecting icons. You just, did. Just, just like you set up something. <laughs> That's an old partition, that one. <laughs> That's going through all your, all your rollbacks. Anyway, as it goes, you can see that it shows you in the status box there which directory it's working on at the moment. It, 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 it doesn't show every directory. It just updates 
about four or five times a second. So you can see that it's running and it's doing something. It shows you a running total of the number of directories and files and comments and everything else as it goes. At the end here, it shows... Can you just expand it uh, vertically a bit, Bill? At, at the end of its run, it... it uh, no, I think there are quite a few of those. Just leave it like that, thanks. At the end of its run, you can see that there are some errors in the first pass. They're all repairable errors, um, e easy to repair. We won't try to do it now because it would take too long. <laughs> but uh, in Bill's case, these, these are all easy to fix problems. And you can see that on his alt workbench, which must be a fairly big one, it is. It's a very big file. It's taken some 38 seconds to run through it. On a typical uh, system installation, uh, system disk, it takes about 10 seconds on, a, on an X5000. On my Tabor, it takes about 14. It's a little bit slower, but not that much. So there it is running on another, on another partition now with a few more interesting errors, once again, e easily fixable. So, that's it. Uh, both NG NGFS and NGF Tech will be available sometime with the next paid update of the OS. There are demonstration <laughs> versions, uh, the CLI-only version of NGF Tech, uh, available with the Tabor and Cyrus X5000 uh, versions on sale at the moment. Go on. Any questions? do better than fast file system? But, um, <laughs> yes. What does NGFS do better than other file systems? Well, the fast file system is FFS. Okay. It's a lot faster than the fast file system. Okay, okay. It, um, I forget the figures that I quoted three years ago, but in reading and writing, for instance, looking up files, the, the usual sort of things, it's about 50 times faster than FFS. It's about the same speed as SFS, so there's no real um, speed uh, advantage or uh, lack of a disadvantage against SFS. So it behaves about the same as SFS. A bit better here and a bit less there. But certainly it's a way better than FFS. And it, its greatest advantage, if I may say so myself, is that it's maintained. <coughs> it, it, it's maintained and maintainable. Um, FFX it isn't. It, it's uh, not, <coughs> not been updated for several years, and in many areas it's completely unmaintainable. It just can't uh, increase uh, improvement because to do so would mean destroying all the disk structures and bringing them up to date in various ways, like 64 bit disk compressors, for instance, which it just isn't possible anymore without rewriting. Any more questions? Maximum. No, I think we're done. Ma maximum uh, this size. I'm sorry. Maximum the maximum is this size. size. Oh, there's no maximum. No. It, it says <laughs> big as your disk capacity. No, I, what's the theoretical limit? It's probably more. As big as your disk capacity, which is uh, 16 it's exabytes. Sorry? 16 exabytes. Oh. That's it? Yeah. Weak, weak sauce. <laughs> he wants more. What about a zettabyte array? He wants more. A Keep it down and back. <laughs> Two more weeks. If you're reading. If you're reading. Thanks, guys. I think it's safe to say that you probably wouldn't hear from the uh, developers on other platforms in a setting like this uh, that you didn't have to pay a thousand bucks to attend. Uh, and uh, details such as this are 
and be able to help to those of us who deal with these kinds of things. Uh, thank you, Tony, for developing the, the software and also for helping us to see it. Uh, so uh, we really, really appreciate your efforts tremendously. Um, I do have an announcement about next year's show. The, uh, the dates have already been booked. Uh, in fact, the dates have already been posted on MUS.net. Uh, they just were posted right now. So next year's show will be October 21st through October 25th, 2020. Lots of 20s in there. Um, and the, the hotel rate code, which we will negotiate and announce soon, uh, is will be active from um, October 20th through October 26th, the day before and the day after. Uh, so you can get the annual list rates uh, at the, uh, uh, you know, by calling the hotel in, in the usual process uh, next year. <clears throat> now, I've already spoken to them about the rates, the room rates especially. Uh, they will likely go up, but not more, as I've been told, not more than a few dollars a room. Uh, so we can probably uh, count on, you know, pretty much what we have right now for that. And uh, also been assured that the meeting room space uh, contract will be pretty much the same cost as well. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do next year is fill it up a little more. And uh, for those of you who uh, know people who are even potentially interested in uh, a new operating system, a new computer, a new platform, uh, you know, we now have other means uh, to access this. Uh, so the lots of new hardware coming out. We have the Alex Box. Uh, we've got all kinds of things going on. So I think uh, this year's show was interesting, uh, and very interesting. Next year's show will be even more so. So uh, please do make your plans to attend. Um, and you can make the reservation for your hotel room up to 50 weeks in advance. Now, I want to make sure this gets on the net because people mis frequently misunderstand this. Your card will not be charged. It is required to reserve the room, but it's not charged until you check out at the end of your stay. You can cancel the room up to one day before the show starts. So please make your reservation. And from a technical standpoint, what this does for us as, a, as show organizers is it helps us fill up the block of rooms. If we need more rooms, we can get them, especially since it's a year out. Uh, but the, if you wait until the last second to reserve, first of all, you won't get the rate, and second of all, our block will not be credited. Now, you're probably saying, well, who gives a rip? Well, what happens to us is that the more rooms we sell, the more negotiation leverage we have on the rates for this space, as well as for the rates for the hotel rooms. So sign up. If you're coming anyway and you know it, sign up. Uh, two weeks from today, you can, you can sign up. Um, so it's uh, 50 weeks in advance. They don't take 52. Yeah. Don't know why. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's going to be up there. The rates will, will be up there soon. Uh, so you can safely make a reservation. Your card will not be charged. Uh, and you'll have lots of uh, time to make sure that you have funding for the trip and that your friends have funding for the trip. Uh, I really appreciated, uh, you know, uh, Amok bringing two of the club members with you. Thank you very much. So let's give them a hand for that. Uh, and uh, they, came, they came all the way from Canada. Uh, those of you who live here at Elk Grove, uh, it's not going to cost you a lot of money to drive out the road, so please do. And so, all in all, what we're trying to do is not only build attendance, but build exposure for the developers and the develop developments that are happening. Um, so, and you'll hear about this on the blog too. I'm going to attempt this year to make at least one post a week. Uh, and so we'll double the number of posts we usually put up. Uh, I did learn, you know, through the error on the post that a lot of people read the blog. So keep reading and uh, be able to uh, see all of the, all of the, uh, uh, things that are coming up as well, and we'll uh, probably make more of a, more out of that, and show you a little more of the inner workings of what goes on here uh, through the club uh, sponsorship of this show, and also through the um, negotiations that go on, as well as uh, a few of the nuts and bolts that happen during the year. So those are things that are planned for the blog, and I really hope to see a lot of you, especially those in the online audience, uh, here next year uh, for MUS 2020. Again, uh, October 21 through October 25, 2020, right here. So uh, thank you for your time and attention. And like I said before, 
Um, you'll see some people depart uh, because they are pretty much have to uh, go home and attend to power outages and fires. So, but do stick around. Uh, and you know, part of what we do here is conversation uh, plans for uh, coming months. And you know, please do let us you know converse with you and find out uh, what your experience has been here. Uh, we are also looking for feedback. So if you want to feedback to us about this year's show, uh, hopefully positive comments, but if you can you know, uh, couch deficiencies in positive language, that would be nice to read. Uh, and please send it to info at amus.net, which is our information, our general uh, information email address. So uh, those are uh, you know, some of the things that we're trying to get going this year. I'm hoping to uh, appoint somebody, some hapless club member, uh, to manage this email and uh, find out you know, what we can do to summarize it and improve. Robert. Do we have to call the hotel proper to make Amy West reservations? Well, the, it, uh, it, it appears to depend upon where you're surfing in from. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Um, so the AMI group code is good on the, uh, on the internet. I've tested it myself. Uh, it works on my X5000 from Roseville. So uh, using the Odyssey web browser. So, and that's another thing, uh, just a little plug for the Odyssey web browser on the X5000, it works great for me. And uh, you know, I do PayPal on it, I do my bank on it, I do, uh, everybody who uses server-side security and doesn't give a rip about what kind of browser I use, it works great, it works super. So, uh, you know, those of you who uh, you know, sometimes find you know, crazy things going on with the Odyssey web browser, uh, that's the reason is because they're, uh, those sites are looking for client-side security. And uh, obviously, you know, our version of Safari is too old uh, when, they, when they finger it to find that out. So if the online code doesn't work, call them. Uh, as far as I know, Joseph, the Assistant General Manager here, will still be here next year. And fortunately, we're getting them to train the people on the desk to actually get into the lock and, and make reservations. So uh, that's any other questions about that? So, <clears throat> so really, you know, reserve ahead of time. This year we sold more nights than we've ever sold. We sold 72 nights of housing. And so uh, next year I'd like to make it 100. Uh, so uh, and especially those of you who are coming in, you know, from out of state or could share a room with somebody, that would be an ideal way to cut the cost in half. Or out of the country or, you know, uh, from some other planet. Uh, <laughs> although I don't think we have any other, other planetary visitors with us right now. Of course, maybe, sure. maybe, maybe we do. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> they're just in, just in good disguise. So that's all I have for uh, right now. I, and uh, pretty soon, since uh, Mr. Borsari has to depart and uh, deal with the things at home, power outages for PG&E, uh, we're probably going to be shutting down the stream fairly soon before the show ends. But uh, thank you, Bill, again, for doing all this hard work. Let's give it all here. <laughs> and SAC members, give us a wave. Who's in SAC that is still here? OK, back in the back, SAC members. All right, there's the other volunteers. Thank you very much. Thank you to Jerry for the games competition. Uh, and especially the, uh, now Jerry, do we have a new champion for the day? <laughs> we, heard, we heard a groan from the game board. <laughs> Mark, okay. Yeah. Well, so far, we, I guess we won't be able to announce them online because we have a few hours left. Hey, Jerry, bring the trophy over here real quick. Yeah, let's, let us see the trophy. Yeah, let's bring that. These are really cool. Jerry, uh, Things that were custom designed just for this show, uh, just for this purpose of, of trophies and 3D printed to give us trophies. This is pretty cool. Uh, so it'll, it'll really be a, a cool deal here. Yeah, there's the, the this is the Boing Ball trophy. Very nice. Completely licensed. <laughs> of course. <laughs>
Oh, it does. Now spin it around it's like it's on a pedestal. Oh, it's a big That's a head. And drop your belly at the same time. Come on, look at this thing. It's awesome. It is awesome. I can't. I'm not going to try. He's like, I got to leave. It's awesome. It's really awesome. It's very cool. And your kids made it. It's even better. Yeah. Yeah, my younger son modeled it. And my little son printed it. And. Um, my wife and older son did the painting of all three of the different elements of it. So wife and two sons designed and built the the uh, trophies for this year. Yes. Will there be a games competition next year? I hope so. I hope so. I've, okay. I've been in some, to some tentative talks with the regular uh, podcaster, the, the game <coughs> reading podcaster. Oh, yes, yes. Eric and Cody. And they do have some interest in maybe teaming up next year to do something. So we'll be in conversation throughout the year to figure out what we can do. And yeah, maybe we'll stream it. That'd yeah. be fine. That'd yeah. Be great. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we've had, and we've had some attendees here who uh, run a games podcast, and they're local here in Elk Grove. So uh, we'll be having some updates from them as well throughout the year. So things are exciting, uh, and we're hopefully including you as part of the excitement next year as well. So thanks again, Bill, and uh, we'll cut off the stream, but we're not going to cut off the show. Uh, so we'll hang around for a bit, and then we'll be able to... There will be an after party, like there usually is, uh, at the usual place, because we have travelers going to San Francisco tonight to catch an aircraft in the morning, or maybe even later tonight, I don't know. So uh, we'll be at Brookfields tonight for that after party. You're invited to that as well, no host. So uh, come prepared to, to order and be on your own. But it's always a fun time to, to converse as well. So <clears throat> uh, with that, we'll uh, cut off the stream and have some more conversation. Have a great year. See you next year.